Hi guys, so if you didn't see last week I have started to review the Friday the 13th franchise and last week I released my review of Friday the 13th part 1 which I will link somewhere here if you want to go and check that out. So I'm a relatively late comer to the Friday the 13th franchise out of the big ones like Scream and Nightmare and Halloween and Texas Chainsaw, Friday the 13th is the last one for me to actually visit and I think I only watched them for the first time about two years ago and when I did watch them I watched the remake first and then went back and started from the beginning and I actually only made my way up to the seventh one I think where there's the um, telekinetic Carrie-esque character. So what I'm really excited about um, with reviewing this franchise is I am not only revisiting the movies and seeing if there's anything else that I can gain from them that I didn't the first time round, but there's also still a handful of them that I get to visit for the first time. The first Friday the 13th film that I watched was the remake, but my first um, experience or introduction to Jason Voorhees was in Freddy vs Jason because I was already a fan of the Nightmare series and I had watched Freddy vs Jason um, in that context so that was my first introduction to Jason Voorhees. So today I'm talking about and reviewing part two which was released in 1981 a year after the release of the original. Steve Miner takes over directing from Sean Cunningham and Cal Fullerton replaces Tom Savini in doing the special effects for the film. So Friday the 13th part 2 is often considered one of the strongest installments in the franchise along with part 4 and part 6. In part 2 we are finally introduced to the franchise's famous antagonist Jason Voorhees and it also begins the pattern of the opening of the film linking to the ending of the previous film and the ending of this film following on or being open for a sequel. So even though part two is a popular choice in the franchise today, on its initial release it received mostly negative reviews and was a lot less financially successful than part one, but it was successful enough and made enough money for them to decide to release a part three a year later. For me personally, I really like part two. I think I do prefer it to part one. It's definitely the one that I have rewatched the most and I think it's just such an easy, fun, a comforting watch that I love to pop it in every single summer. So the opening of part two is set six months after the events of the first film and it follows Alice, who was the final girl from the first film, as we see her trying to move on with her life after the events of the last film. I actually read that Adrian King, who plays Alice, was stalked by an obsessed fan after the release of the first Friday the 13th and she asked for her role in part two to be as small as possible because of this and I just think that's so sad. That must have been such a terrifying experience for her. I personally feel as though the opening of part two is a negative aspect of the film. We have 12 minutes, 12 very slow minutes of just watching Alice dream and squirm and cry out in her bed and then we follow her as she walks around her apartment and takes a shower um, and even though this movie was only released a year after the original, it has to recap for the audience nearly the entirety of the ending of the previous movie. And between the opening of the film and the boring credits, um, it's a whole 14 minutes before we actually get into the part two section of part two. So the events of part two take place five years after the events of the first movie and it follows a group of camp counsellors who are staying at a training camp that is located on Crystal Lake. So for me a huge improvement between part two and the original is the pacing of the movie. Part two does this much much better. The original movie is often considered and accused of being quite boring and slow paced and while I do defend it and say that it's probably not as boring as some people make it out to be, I do agree that there are pacing issues. I do agree that there are sections of that film that drag on for far too long and in part two there is a much better balance between the kills and the action and just the following the counsellors in their day-to-day -day activities. So in the first Friday the 13th the characters did talk about and acknowledge the legend of Jason Voorhees. In the original film the legend was that he had drowned in the lake and ever since then the Camp Crystal Lake and the lake itself had been cursed. And in part two, what we see is this legend change and evolve. This time they say that Jason Voorhees survived his drowning and has been living in the woods around the lake ever since. Now Jason has become much more than just a superstition. He's now a ghost story that is told to scare kids. And I absolutely love how the characters 
tell each other, but the audience, the legend of Jason Voorhees, sat around um, a campfire in a camp. I mean, that's the thing with legends and ghost stories, is that over time they do change and evolve like Chinese whispers. Over time, people tell their own versions, and often different towns and different cities have their own versions of urban legends. And I think that within this film, as there is a time gap of five years, it's very believable that the legend of Jason Voorhees would change. I think it is much more believable as an in movie universe ghost story than it is as an actual plot point in the film, but I will get into that. And while unfortunately part two no longer has the incredible special effects by Tom Savini, I do think that it's fair to say it has some really good kills. Often in slashes there's a lot of knife kill after knife kill, but I think that this film has quite a good variety and surely it has one of the most well-known kills in the franchise when one of the characters, Mark, is attacked and has a machete put in his face and then in his wheelchair he falls down the long um, set of stairs from the camp. I did say in my last review that I actually quite enjoy the characters in part one but I much much prefer the characters from part two. They're just so much more enjoyable to watch. I mean Paul the head counsellor who's giving the training to the others is pretty irritating at times but not to an unbearable point. And I think that despite being mostly a product of the time there is some humour and enjoyment in the flirting between Terry and Scott and I also really like the sweet relationship that develops between Mark and Vicky. I also said in my last review that I'm not the biggest fan of Alice as a final girl. I just think that she falls a little bit flat but in part two we are given a much much stronger final girl in Ginny. Ginny is often considered one of the best final girls definitely within the Friday the 13th franchise but I think also in horror as a whole. I mean if you ask people to list their top 10 final girls Ginny is probably in there amongst Sydney, Nancy and Laurie. She's a really well-written character. She's smart, she's fun and she can hold her own against other people as well. Like for example when her love interest Paul is ragging on her for one reason or another. My major issue with Alice was that no matter how mildly capable she appeared early on in the film, there was none of that by the time we hit the final act. She just whimpered a lot. Whereas Ginny is still smart. She's very capable of giving just as good as she gets in the final act. And quite rightly so, when things start going wrong, Ginny's first instinct is to get the hell out of Dodge and when that doesn't work, she arms herself and begins to attack Jason. Although of course, being a final girl, she's not immune to making stupid decisions like dropping the knife or putting down the chainsaw and hitting Jason with a chair. But we do get the iconic scene where Ginny discovers um, Jason's house and she finds his mother's severed head and she realises the power that his mother has over him and she uses that to brilliantly manipulate Jason enough to be able to subdue him and then attack him. Okay, now for a couple of negatives with part two. The first one being that the acting is not always the absolute best, but it is kind of a weak negative because the Friday films are not loved for their incredible acting performances. They're loved for the TNA and the kills. Secondly, I'm not the biggest fan of this version of Jason. I have no problem with um, the look of him. I think that that's fine. I just don't think he's as scary or effective as a villain, as later Jasons in the franchise or even as effective as Mrs Voorhees, who I personally find pretty unsettling. This Jason just isn't scary and I think I have more sympathy for him than fear. He's kind of just this man-child who's been left alone in the world after seeing his mother murdered. And he's clumsier and more what I would call scampy rather than a deadly killing machine. And finally, for me, the biggest negative about part two is the major continuity flaw within the story. In the first film, we were led to believe that Jason drowned and he died and this broke Mrs Voorhees, which led her to kill the two camp counsellors a year later. And then she went on to dedicate her life to making sure that the camp remained shut by, I think, what did she do? Poison the water and things like that. And that also led her on to her killing spree within the original Friday the 13th. All of this was done because she believed that her son had died, but he didn't. Now we're told in part two that Jason survived the drowning and has been living in the woods ever since. And so they believe that he likely saw everything his mother did, saw her killing spree and eventually saw her killed. But at no point in all of these years did Jason think or have the foresight to jump out and just go, 
You're right, mum. It's fine. I didn't die. Look, I'm here. It's okay. I know that continuity issues do become a bit of a thing in the Friday the 13th franchise, as they do in Halloween, as they do in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But as far as I'm aware for the Friday franchise, this is the main one. This is the big continuity issue. So there you are guys, my review of Friday the 13th part two released in 1981. Like I said in the opening, I do prefer part two to part one. And I think that part two is definitely the one that I have rewatched the most. We well, see the part two of Freddy vs. Jason, but I watched Freddy vs. Jason as more of a fan of the Nightmare on Elm Street films. Don't forget to check out my review of part one if you haven't already. And if you're enjoying my reviews of this franchise, then don't forget to click subscribe so that you don't miss any of them. My next review should be for part three coming out at the beginning of next week, followed by my review of part four coming out at the end of next week. But in the meantime, thank you as always for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Take care of yourselves and I will talk to you in the next episode. Bye guys.